we will continue to celebrate our Lord because our confidence is in Him. It is not in our strength. It is not in anything that we have or we have come across, but it is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And if the Lord is your portion, beloved, this morning, it is because of you that each year we celebrate this for Jesus to remind you that he is there for you. Give him praise, give him praise, give him praise. With the permission of our father, Reverend Daniel Lawson, the session, briefly I want to introduce my brother. I came with my brother who happened to be a pastor, an ordained pastor in the Assemblies of God Church, but he was a Presbyterian. So after everything, he said, no, I must come back to my church, the Presby Church. Oh, Holly. oh, you can give God praise for that. And so, it happened that we all met from first year to third year. He has been my roommate, he has been my brother and a friend. And is now a full Presbyterian because for you to become a Presbyterian, you have to be in the church for about two or more years. And so he's now a full Presbyterian. He's now going through the process so that the church will now let him become a full reverend minister of the Presbyterian Church. Oh, give God praise. Give God praise for that. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Indeed, you are God. Indeed, you are the miraculous God. Indeed, every day is an opportunity for us to experience you. And this is the day that, Lord, you have made for us to be glad and rejoice in it. And for us to lift your banner high above everything. Lord, we lift your name high. This morning, O oh God, in all our circumstances, in all our challenges and whatever thing that we are going through, O oh Holy Spirit, do your work by explaining the word of God to us that we will walk in the victory of our Lord and Master Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord, that every power and every spirit that is not of you will obey you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we will live here transformed. We will live here empowered. We will live here healed. We will live here delivered. And we will live here with your love, your peace, and your power. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Last two weeks, Papa took us through some session, and we are looking at the mystery of Christ, the mystery of Christ. And the verse 19 of Colossians 1, we realize that the fullness of God is in Christ because God is pleased with him. The fullness of God is in Christ. And today, we are looking at the victorious Christ, what made Jesus the Son of God, the Son of Mary, the Son of Joseph, victorious. What made him victorious? I'm going to touch on two, uh, three things that the Lord will help us. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, the world cannot give you the peace that you want. Not even your spouse. Your pastor cannot give you the peace that you want. Nobody can give you the life that you are looking for except Jesus Christ. And because you have come to Jesus, I want you to believe that he will surely lead you to have that life. If you believe it, shout hallelujah. Now, in the three readings, there are some key things over there. The first reading we can see one obedience, we can see sacrifice and assurance of God's help. Obedience, sacrifice, and assurance 
of God's help. And in the second reading, it's not different. In the second reading, we are also looking at obedience, sacrifice, servanthood, humility. Hallelujah. And the third reading, we also look, we will see that we have obedience and the fulfillment of God's promises or God's word. Or fulfillment of God's prophecy. And that should give you an assurance that in the name of Jesus, as we read, as Zachariah prophesied, and all the prophets prophesied, and it came to pass, what God has said concerning your life will surely come to pass in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, your amen is weak. In the name of Jesus. I'm saying it again, that if the word of God that came to pass in the life of Jesus, what God has said, what God has promised, what God has written, has spoken, what God has laid down for your life will surely come to pass in the name of Jesus. I want, I want us to join a very good party. Uh, nowadays, if you say you want to be in MPP, NDC, and CPP, my party, my party is CPP. My roommates will always tell me that, oh, whatever I stay now, we'll party in it, they say, whoa. But see, people will resurrect one day. Maybe if it is the will of God, I will be the next frag burial. You don't believe it. I said, if it is the will of God. So kids, close. God bless you. Now, what made Jesus the victorious Christ? What made Jesus the victorious Christ? And we can see from the three readings that it is obedience, it is sacrifice, and it is assurance that Jesus has, that no, no matter what it is, God is with me. And he will surely vindicate me. He will surely honor me. He will surely glorify himself. And so, uh, this part that I'm introducing to you is LPP. Say LPP. That's, a, that's the party I want you to join. And then when you join this party, you are going to live a victorious life to the glory of God. Now what is LPP? L is the love of God. P is the peace of God. And the last P is the power of God. The love of God, the peace of God, and the power of God. In, in, ga, 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 the power of God. The power of God. Hallelujah. We need to celebrate Jesus so much. And I want us to look at one or two things because of time. And then we will continue. Now, the love of God. It is what made Jesus to obey God. Without the love of God, you cannot obey God. You will pretend obeying God, but you cannot obey God and you will have that satisfaction that you are obeying God. Because when you are pretending and you don't have the love of God, what it means is that fear will come in. And God has not given us a fear, but he has given us love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so God demonstrates the love. And so that Jesus will also have the love. Jesus said, I and my Father are one. And in 1 John chapter 4, verse 8 and 19, the verse 8 says that God is love. And the verse 19 says, He first loved us. That is why we love Him. So if God did not show us that love, there is no way we will love him. Now, it tells you that there is power in love. When you are loving somebody, it doesn't mean you are a fool, 
but you are demonstrating the power of God in your life. Without the love of God, there is no way God can deliver us from ourselves and the sin or the devil. God cannot deliver us. It is love that conquers. So John 3.16, he said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. And verse 7, he said that for the, God did not send the Son to come and condemn us, but to save us. That is the love. So it is the love of God that compels us. That is why we are following him. That is why when sometimes we look around and we look at things that is worrying us, we will think about the love of God and we'll just let it go. May the love of God fill your heart. May we increase in the love of God. Because that is what will give us victory. Now, from the Old Testament you can realize that there are some prophets, their actions, I believe does not please God. But God has to accept it because of the free will he has given to man. And so when Jesus came, Jesus demonstrated. And we are looking for peace. We are looking for peace. We want to enjoy the peace of God. And so the peace of God is what we need. If you have the love of God, you need the peace of God. Another time we will go into red detail. And so Jesus, leaving the disciples in John 14, 27, the disciples, they were disturbed. They said, hey, Master, Master, I better do with you, who going? Where are you going? I mean, they were disturbed. Like you tell somebody, um, I, want, I, want, I want to leave you for some time. You say, oh, no, Why? You feel it. Because you know that when you have that person around, you have some kind of peace. Is that not it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus said, my peace I give to you. Because God is peace, he has given Jesus the peace. Be beginning, I said that in verse 19, Colossians 1, Jesus, that we realize that the fullness of God is in Christ. So, 1 Corinthians 14, verse, verse 33, is that God is not a God of confusion, it's a God of peace. God is peace. God is peace. He's not a God of confusion. So, anytime you see confusion around you, that is the work of the devil. And you must let the peace of God prevail. May the peace of God prevail over your situation. In the name of Jesus. And so, Jesus, realizing that, he said, no, I know. I've talked about to you about the love of God. And the love of God, Jesus demonstrated the love of God. He said, the greater love is this, that a friend will lay down his life for his neighbor. This. And doing that, all the things. Now let's look at something before I come to the peace of God. John 13, 1. John 13, 1. John 13, 1, first. I'm going to read from John 13, 1. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto death. Now, this is the scripture, this is the passage we saw Jesus washing the feet of the disciples. And he has shown that love, knowing very well that Judas will betray him, but he demonstrated love for Judas. He washed the feet of Judas. Sometimes, God will reveal, you will see, that this person doesn't love you. But do you know what you will do to overcome? Is for you to demonstrate the love of God. Now how? Because you to have the peace of God. Jesus is the prince of peace. 
Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. He is, he shall be called the prince of peace. The prince of peace. Who is his father? God. And therefore he has the peace. He said, my peace I give you. I give you my peace. Did not how the world give it. May the peace of God fill your heart. Now, God wants us to demonstrate power. And when we have the power of God, and we don't take care, we will destroy our own self. And that is why God wants us to be filled with his love. Then we will have peace. Then he can give you power. Because if he gives you the power, we will misuse the power. And so he has to give us peace, give us love, so that you will love your neighbor. And then you have the peace of God. And then you can demonstrate the power of God in your life and so in john 1 12 he says he gave those who believe in him the power to become children of god beloved in the lord beloved in the lord i want us to write these things as we zoom into prayer or you can you can have it is i'm saying that i want to read it the love and the peace of God compels or causes us to live a powerful life through the help of the Holy Spirit in Christ Jesus with humility and faith. To do what? To enjoy the promises of God. One. Two. To fulfill your divine mandates. It is the love of God. The peace of God. And the power of the Holy Spirit. That will help us to have that life in Christ Jesus. So that with humility and with faith. You can enjoy the promises of God. And not just enjoy the promises of God. But what God has said concerning your life, you will also enjoy it. Jesus said, my glory I give to you. I don't know what you are going through. But this is what the word of God said. That's what we are going to use it to pray shortly. He says that, go there, untie the donkey and bring it. And when I finish, I'll bring it. But this time, you are not going back. I don't know. Anxiety, fear, bitterness immorality whatever has chained you jesus said he's setting you free he's setting you free he's setting you free if you believe that today you will experience the peace the love the peace and the power of god let us be on our feet please of our fear he wants you to have that peace and go through it because his grace is sufficient for you i don't know is it is it as a as amphobia whatever it is god wants to set you free that rejection that you are receiving it is because of you that jesus it because of you and i that jesus is entering to conquer everything and when he entered into jerusalem do you know what he did he swept away every filter thing in the temple your body is the temple of god and jesus is coming to sweep away anxiety to sweep away the fear to sweep away all those that demonic seed in your life is here to set you free is here to set you free 
Can you raise up your right hand with me? Raise up your right hand with me. We give glory to the Lord. He reigns. We give glory to the Lord. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. This is your prayer. He will reign. He will demonstrate his power over you now. We life in Jesus Christ open your mouth and pray God is faithful he will give it to you he will give it to you he said he needs your body he said go anybody that will ask you tell the person I need it I am telling the devil that you don't belong to him you belong to Jesus you don't belong to failure you don't belong to anxiety you don't belong to bitterness you don't belong to the last you belong to Jesus he needs you tell him the Lord Fill me with your love. Fill me with your peace. Fill me with your power. That I will leave. Oh, that sickness, that sickness, that sickness, that sickness cannot take hold of your life. It cannot sariba That sickness cannot take over your life. The devil cannot take your marriage. The devil cannot take your marriage because he raised a spirit deliverance in your marriage now. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord reign in your affairs. May the Lord reign in your situation now. May the Lord reign in your family. May the Lord reign at your workplace. May the Lord reign at your school. May God reign in this church. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Please, with all humility, put your two hands on your chest and let's pray shortly. Father, we cannot do it. It is you. If you are here, you want to rededicate your life to Jesus. So that you will enjoy the love of God. You will enjoy the peace of God and the power to cause things to change in your life. Don't look at anybody. Just raise up your two hands. I'm saying those who want to dedicate their life, those who want to rededicate, who want to reaffirm their faith in Jesus. This is your day. You have been struggling. You have been doing it with your own strength. God wants to help you. He wants to help you because He loves you. He wants to help you because He wants you to enjoy His peace and His power. Raise up your two hands with me if you want to rededicate your life to Jesus. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus. Or you want to give your life to Jesus. And if you are struggling with something, that you need the grace of God to overcome it. You can also raise up your hand. Don't feel shy. God bless you. All those that have raised up your hands. God bless you. Because God is here. He will give you. From today. From today you experience the love of God. The peace of God. And the power of God to lead the life. You have the power to forgive. You have the power to love your neighbor as God wants us to love our neighbor. You have the power to do all things through Christ that strengthens you. Now, Lord Almighty, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this brethren. 
the Lord Jesus you will take hold of your life with your hands raised they are saying that Jesus we cannot do it anymore we don't want to lean on our own understanding but we want to be with you therefore God vindicate them now in your love in your peace in your love in your peace and your power Lord vindicate them Holy Spirit take charge over their lives that they will live the victorious life through the scriptures each day Lord grant them the grace and let them walk in the supernatural and let them walk oh God the life that you have made for them now may the Lord endow you and fill you with his spirit in the name of Jesus father we thank you that through us you will take us through and then we will leave you victorious in Jesus' name.